y'all. This is Marley K. Hope y'all are well. This is a story to follow up with the other story that I brought you on yesterday uh, when I was telling you about the Venezuela Guyana uh, f- dispute over this huge um, section of annexed land that is apparently the largest uh, oil reserve or has the largest. Um, deposits of what could be oil and gas in the world, and it's apparently bigger than um, what is in the Middle East. So with that, um, Venezuela has decided that they are not getting off of the fossil fuels because that's a huge part of their national economy and is good for the entire um, continent. And with this push by COP28 to end fossil fuels, uh, a lot of the fossil fuel um, nations are pushing back and like, no, we're not doing away with it completely because, of course, it would knock them out of um, resources if that's how they generate their wealth. Also, the planned electric vehicle revolution is not sustainable. Everybody can see it, everybody knows it, but people just will not admit it. They're just going to rush us into this electric vehicle uh, revolution where the dominant society, the children of the corn, are hoping to reinvent themselves and capitalize off of that. Well, we all have gas power vehicles, so we need oil and gas to fuel our stuff. But they're going to force the they children of the corn are attempted to get the western nations off of fossil fuels and get us into this solar power electric vehicle electric appliances electric everything which is is natural to some extent but a lot of this stuff that they want us to do is very not natural and it's not even good for the environment because the lithium batteries need a new way to be disposed of. It's very costly. You're going to have to pay uh, extra tax to have the battery from your car disposed of. You can't get rid of solar powered batteries any kind of way. You just can't throw them in a trash can. You can't throw away LED lights. So everything that they are transitioning us to is not going to be better. It's just going to be, it's going to be the equivalent of us using the old ways that we used to, um, do things using glass and and clay and all these other things for dishes then they created plastics and papers and now those things you know we're finding 50 years 40 50 years later don't break down and so it's bad for the environment so now we got to recycle and we got to have special bins and we got to sort our stuff special ways so they can dispose of that well we're getting ready to go into another revolution of that so i don't care what these people talking about if y'all don't use y'all's common sense and understand they just run a game on us game after game after game after game it's all a racket for consumerism so that these wealthy corporations and these wealthy people who run the entire world can continue to enslave us by pushing stuff to us that we don't need and have us in this perpetual state of consumption when that is not how we're supposed to be living. So anyway, getting back to the car stuff, this oil thing is big. And also, um, you know, the fight between Venezuela and Guyana is one thing, but either one of those nations stand stands to become like the Middle East or a Russia or China because of the vast amount of resources, natural resources that nation um, will control and be able to make money off of. Because you have to understand the majority of the people do not live in the West. The majority of the people in the world live in the global South. And if you don't know what the global South is, you need to go look that up. But it's basically where the majority of the poorest people and non-white people live those are the most populated places on earth and they have more things than we have they have more cars they have more people they use more resources um but not in in the way that we here in the west use resources like in overconsumption um you know they don't live in two big grand houses they don't have a bunch of cars they may have a little moped and a shant a shack in a shanty town 
um, but they still use fossil fuel in order to get back and forth to town or wherever they need to go. So they're saying that you're going to get everybody off of fossil fuel is like not reasonable, it's unachievable, it's unattainable because a lot of places in the world will not have access to power stations to power up electric anything. So really what they're trying to do is is, um, shift our consumption because BRICS is getting ready to take over the fossil fuel game. And that and, and with the de-dollarization, it means that America and the West will not have um, control over the dollar. They won't have control over oil. They won't be able to dictate the currency used um, because br- the BRICS alliance will um, nix that. And so they are trying to shift and make it fashionable for us to be using electric and solar. Not saying that solar isn't good, um, but you got to think about the battery component of it. It's just not, it's not reasonable. It's not good for the earth. It's just a waste. Um, it's unnecessary. And the children of the corn don't care. They don't care. They just they'll tell. They're gonna keep telling us stuff, and folks are just gonna keep buying into it. Um, but if you have a healthy brain and you use your common sense, and you can think back and see and remember all these changes and how you know they tell you the change is good. Like we went from butter to margarine. Now margarine is so bad for you. You gotta go back to butter. But butter now is really expensive, and the margarine is really not expensive. Like everything else, the bad stuff is cheap. The good stuff is more expensive. Um, they have price, they've done the price points for this electric and solar stuff the exact same way. So you just got to understand the racket of white supremacy. It's a racket. If you don't understand the hustle, they, they have a hustle. They don't do anything new. They just keep reinventing themselves, doing the same old things that they always do. And folks just forget. Um but I'm here to remind you, nothing they do makes sense. But anyway, let me get into the story. So um, you remember I was telling you that you had, the U.S. was back in Guyana. Um, and I gave you that story. I think that announcement was made on yesterday. But before yesterday, this happened. A helicopter carrying five senior Guyana military officials is missing near tense border with Venezuela. So um, we don't know what happened. Haven't heard anything about it. So um, it says a military helicopter carrying seven people vanished Wednesday near Guyana's border with Venezuela, with authorities saying there was a there was bad weather in the area and stressing there was no indication it may have been hit by hostile fire as tensions escalate between the countries. So who takes a helicopter out in bad weather? You know what I'm saying? It's like this stuff don't even be making no sense. But when you understand how the powers work and how they're able to craft stories to to convince us of whatever it is that they want to convince us of, then you just be like, I see through this nonsense. So anyway, two crew members aboard the helicopter were taking five senior officers on an inspection of troops guarding a border area that Venezuela claims as its own, according to Army Chief Brigadier General Omar Khan. Venezuelan troops with heavy equipment and machinery have been amassing on the border in the recent weeks, leading to speculation of an imminent invasion. Guyana's president, Irfan Ali, told the Associated Press earlier Wednesday that he was taking all necessary steps to defend his country. Khan told reporters late Wednesday that Guyana's defense force lost contact with the brand new Bell 412 EPI aircraft after it took off from Olive Creek settlement in Western Guyana following a refueling stop. Now, um, do you think this could possibly be the reason that Guyana was like, you know, the U.S. going to help us now. We in America was like, we're back in Guyana. You think anything? Mm. 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 
I'm going to just leave it right there, y'all. Come on now. The plane, the thing was brand new. Brand new. And it was flying in the storm. Does that make any sense to you? Okay. It's like watching a Lifetime movie almost, except for I'm reading it. Asked if the aircraft was shot out of the sky as it flew in a mountainous and heavily forested area. Khan said, there are no indications that occurred. We do not have any information suggesting that there that there was any flight by Venezuelan aircraft in that area, he said. Speculation is not what I want to go into. Our priority is to save the lives of our officers and ranks. He said the U.S. government will help with the search when it resumes Thursday. It's just yesterday when I read y'all that story. The aircraft's disappearance about 30 miles east of the Venezuelan border comes as tensions heighten between Guyana and Venezuela over the, the over the Esequibo region, which is rich with minerals and located near massive oil deposits. Venezuela claims the region as its own, insisting it has been part of the country since Spanish rule. Guyana has maintained that the border defined by international arbitrators in 1899 is the correct one. So international people had to come and tell these two people in the same country what was their land. That's, colonization got us all screwed up, all screwed up. On Sunday, Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro held a referendum in which Venezuelans approved his claim of sovereignty over Esequibo. Then on Tuesday, Maduro said he would immediately grant operating licenses for exploration and exploitation in Esequibo and ordered the creation of local subsidiaries of Venezuelan public companies. Guyana's president, when asked if he, was, he has requested military assistance in the dispute with Venezuela, said his government is reaching out to allies and regional partners, some of which Guyana has defense agreements with, to protect Esequibo. The region makes up two-thirds of the country. So y'all know anybody not allying with Guyana in the West, because they have a stake in this, um, subject to see smoke. So it's going to be very interesting watching what's happening in South America. I recommend y'all pay attention because it also could help fuel our um, immigration issues even more. We take this threat very seriously and we have initiated a number of precautionary measures to ensure the peace and stability of this region, Ali said in a brief phone interview. Should Venezuela proceed to act in this reckless and adventurous manner, the region will have to respond, he said. And that is what we're building a regional response. We're building a regional, regional response. So it says Venezuela has the world's largest proven oil reserves, but two years of mismanagement and economic sanctions imposed by who? The U.S against Maduro's government have hurt PDVSA and subsidiaries. That's all you need to know right there. That's all you need to know. Oppose the West and you get sanctions. Try to try to run your stuff and take care of your business. If it if it harms white supremacy, in white dollars and white business, you got to pay. Interesting. So it says, Maduro announced the creation of a comprehensive defense operational zone for the territory in dispute. It would be similar to special military commands that operate in certain regions of Venezuela. The announcements by Venezuela are in full defiance of international law, Ali said. And so this is in quotations. I am not saying this. Quote, and any country that openly defies important international bodies should be of concern not only for Guyana, 
but for but for all of the world. End of quote. Um, I recommend African Americans mind their business, mind black business. I know we got brothers and sisters over there, um, and across the diaspora, but we struggling it right here. We don't have no energy to put no place else about surviving what's getting ready to come to us. Because guess what? Everything that they are doing is about us. At the end of the day, somehow all this stuff is going to be redirected towards us. So now they're going to be fighting down there. People are going to be coming up here. You know where they're going to place those people? In black communities. Look at New York. Look at Chicago. Look at L.A. Look at Oakland. Look at all the places in America where black people have been historically that are being regentrified once again, but with different types of immigrant groups and all the resources being poured into supporting everybody except for black people. So you could think that this does not impact you, but if you live here in the States, it will impact you because those people are going to migrate up through uh Colombia, Venezuela, leave South America, go through Guatemala, Mexico, next thing you know, voila, they're here. We got open borders. They got almost a whole year and a month or two to be traipsing up through here. So it's only going to get worse. And y'all know nobody likes us. I don't care even if they're black uh, Latin Americans. They don't like us. So... (laughs) You know, you got to look at there's a a plan to destabilize our communities and make us poor and have zero wealth by 2028. That is five years from now, four years from now now. Um, In addition to all the other things that are going on in the world and in this country, you cannot afford to sleep on any bit of news. You got to think about the big picture and everything stems back to how are they going to harm us? There are very succinct ways that they've been operating that harm us. And so this is just another way. Eventually, it's going to trickle to us, Um, not only just through our tax dollars, because our resources will be used to support people when they're not supporting us. And then resources that could go to us once those um, illegal entrants get here, or even if they seek asylum, whatever, whatever they do. When they get here, they're going to be helped. They are going to leapfrog over us and be um, given boots and bootstraps so that they can stomp on your neck. Um, So this is not to be uh, racist or derogatory. It's the truth. And we've been talking about this forever. But when you talk about it, people call you racist. Um, And they only do it to us. White people can complain about everything under the sun Nobody can't come take nothing from them, and they're not racist. But when we do it, we're racist. So we can't have any interest unless our interest includes everybody else. So that's why I'm like, mind your business. Mind Black business, mind African-American Black business. We catching hell trying to survive right here, and that's all we need to be concerned about. We can't even get our own brothers and sisters on one page, on one accord. So um, these people fighting over there in South America will impact us is is the point that I want to make. So it says, Guyana expects to bring up the issue at Wednesday's UN Security Council meeting, which was this week. The president said in a statement late Tuesday that his administration has reached out to the U.S., neighboring Brazil, the United Kingdom, France, the UN Secretary General, and the U.S. Southern Command which oversees military operations in Central and South America and the Caribbean. Don't think this is not going to impact you. It is. It is going to impact us and our resources. Venezuela's government condemned Ali's statement, accusing Guyana of acting irresponsibly and allegedly giving the U.S. Southern Command a green light to enter the Esequibo region. Here you go. Venezuela called on Guyana to resume dialogue and leave aside its erratic, threatening, and risky conduct. 
The diplomatic fight over the Essequibo region has flared over the years, but intensified in 2015 after ExxonMobil announced it had found vast amounts of oil off its coast. So with that said, y'all, the fight is on. World War III is going to be popping everywhere. Every continent is going to get it. And if you think America ain't going to have nothing happen to it, you're going to be sadly mistaken. Everybody going to be fighting. This World War III is going to happen in Europe. It's going to happen in Africa. It's going to happen in South America. It's going to happen here. It's going to be in the ocean. It's going to be on the land. It's going to be in the sky. It's going to be underground. It's, <laughs> it's going to be everywhere. They're going to be doing everything to us. Everything. This is why you need to prepare. This is why you need to prepare. You need to keep your gold bags ready. You need to have your papers and documentations for family members available at all times. So in case you have to leave, you have those things in one place. I have duplicates. You need to have food. You need to have water. You need to have temporary shelter if you got to leave your house and stay outside. You need to be prepared for any and everything because we don't know what's coming. But you're getting all these signs and you're feeling all these growing pains and you're seeing destruction, wars and threats of wars and people doing all kinds of stuff. It's just not good. But what's not good is sitting on your hands and pretending like you don't see what's coming. Um, it's getting ready to get bad, y'all. Um, this COP28 is over and everybody's talking about this oil and then fossil fuels. And you got the um, the global south bucking the dominant society. So it's getting ready to get live. Y'all know why people don't take kindly to rejection. They don't like to be rebuked. They don't like <laughs> they don't like to be uh, rejected. They don't like to not be able to steal people's stuff and control everybody. They don't take kindly to that. They don't like to share. So if you don't think that this is going to lead to something bad, um, just keep watching. All right, this is Marley K. Please like this video, share it, and subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell notification so that you'll be notified every time I upload new content and give you these different takes on what could be happening in our world. Follow me on Rumble, Odyssey, Instagram, and on Facebook in the event that this channel is taken down. All of my content here is uploaded to um, Odyssey, so you'll be able to see all the old videos that I've done. And you'll also be able to see my new videos on Rumble, unless they boot me off there too. If you'd like to support the channel, links are in the description. Any donations that you give are greatly appreciated. This is a labor of love. We don't have sponsorships and we are not monetized. And we is in me because I'm the only one that does this. Lastly, keep praying, keep prepping, keep prepping, keep prepping, keep seeking the most high. Um, seeking wisdom and guidance and spiritual discernment to understand what is happening because this is a spiritual battle as just as much as it is a physical battle for survival and um only the fittest will survive so with that said thank y'all so much for being here and staying to the end love y'all and i'm out